You're not the real heroes. I'm the real hero. Has there ever been a villain as horrifying as the superhero Homelander? At least Thanos thought he was being compassionate. The Boys has become the last word on the satirical critique of the superhero genre that posit that there's no way you could have people as powerful as a superhero and not have them ultimately be a terrible person who comfortably lives beyond consequences. No single character personifies that as much as the all-American Superman analog, Homelander, otherwise known as the reason Batman has a reason to be suspicious. Being feared is A1 okie doke by me. Just how downright evil has the baddest good guy ever gotten? You don't want to go to hell for all eternity, do you? There's a sequence in All-Star Superman number 10 that has managed to personify what Superman is all about. Not by punching Darkseid or outsmarting Lex Luthor, but by hearing a troubled woman out, validating her feelings, and offering a person who has lost all hope enough hope to step off the ledge and back to safety. He could have just flown up and grabbed her, but Superman is not about the amount of power he has, but his compassion and restraint in using it. That's not something Homelander has any of. I'm better! I am better! In a contrast to that sequence in the Superman comics, Homelander encounters an equally lost young woman. When he shows up to save the day, he's merely going through the motions, doing what's required of him and nothing more. That is until his even more horrible girlfriend gives up. At that point, Homelander decides that if Stormfront couldn't be saved, this nobody didn't deserve it. Jump. Please, I, I just want to get down. I'm not down. suggesting anymore. Instead of pulling her off the ledge, he pushes her over because he's a total nightmare. The Deep early on managed to do the seemingly impossible. Find a bridge too far even for the Seven and Vought. What? <laughs> this has meant that since the first season, he has been off the team working his way back. In episode three of the third season, a freshly emboldened Homelander has found his way to work the Deep back on the team. But that doesn't mean it's all sunshine and pancakes. Homelander gives the Deep and his wife a welcome back dinner to celebrate. A welcome back dinner consisting of seafood, otherwise known as the Deep's friends and, well, fetish. I'm so hungry. <laughs> The main course? The Deep's octopus friend Timothy served alive so that the Deep can hear him beg for his life as Homelander forces the Deep to eat his friends alive. It does manage to give the viewer a moment of empathy, with a character who has up to that point been pretty much the worst. Second, of course, to Homelander. Wasn't that delicious? <sighs> The Boys Presents Diabolical gave us a series of shorts that glimpsed the wider world of the boys, largely avoiding characters from the series except for the short 1 plus 1 equals 2, which gives us a look at Homelander on his first day on the job. Before he's become the jaded narcissist man-child, it finds him pushing up against his handlers, looking to get into the action, which he finds in a hostage situation at a chemical plant. My name's Homelander, and I'm not here to hurt anyone. It's there that he finds out what actually happens when you heat up a gun full of gunpowder and bullets. It can go kablooey. Oh, you idiot, it looks ah! He scores his first kill accidentally, only to find out that the kidnappers just wanted their grievances heard, and he slaughters everyone, hostage and kidnapper alike, and later blowing the plant up, fighting Black Noir before he realizes that the veteran member of the Seven was just there to show the new guy how to shield the soups from consequences. And thus he's set on the path of treating life cheaply. Your ratings went up. Good. That's good. Vought, the company behind the soups who's been artificially creating them via World War II German tech, has carefully crafted their image and the image of their heroes creating a house of lies made out of cards with just one falling out of place, causing the whole thing to crumble. That's what a mayor who has proof Vought is manufacturing soups is counting on when he blackmails Vought and Madeline Sitwell specifically. I happen to know about Compound V. What he doesn't count on is Homelander's super weird relationship with Sitwell, which causes him to go off leash and I beam the mayor's private jet, thus ending the blackmail. Did we mention his super weird relationship with his handler and Vought executive, Madeline Sitwell? You have to be good. And you have to listen to me. It's an Oedipal nightmare that would make even Freud need a sit down. As the only person in the world Homelander had any affection for that manifests in unsettling ways. You'd think that this would mean she's also the only one safe from his wrath, but when he finds out that she has been hiding a son he never knew she had, at that point Butcher's plan to get Homelander through Sitwell goes south, when an enraged Homelander shoots his eye beam straight through hers in retaliation. Not one to waste a good boom, Butcher triggers the C4 strap to Sitwell anyway. The end of Sitwell was not the end of the incredibly strange relationship, however. In fact, it does the seemingly impossible. It turns it up a notch. He enlists the shapeshifter doppelganger to see if he can catch some of that Sitwell feeling again. Change back! I'm sorry! 
I can only hold a shape for so long before it really hurts. When that turns out to be unsatisfying, Doppelganger tries to play on Homelander's own narcissism by changing into Homelander himself. After all, who does Homelander love more than himself? Like what you see. That was Doppelganger's mistake, however, because Homelander cuts his narcissism with healthy doses of self-loathing and took the chance to take the part of him that craved approval and snap its neck. Unfortunately for Doppelganger, that was not metaphorical. It was real. If the revelation that he had a son was enough to make him turn on his one true and truly weird love Sitwell, surely he loves his son. That's what new parents keep telling you when they're not telling you their new baby is a genius because it figured out how to use a toy all by itself. And you fall in love and all your priorities shift and you'll do anything for the child. Well, Homelander has no real understanding of affection or how it works. Sure, he's dedicated to finding his son and being his father, but he's pretty sure the only way to relate to him is if he is also a soup. Rather than doing gradual methodical testing for powers that have yet to manifest, he figures it out the Homelander way. Which is to say, terrible. He takes his son to the roof of a two-story house and pushes him off to see if he will fly. <laughs> he did not. It did turn out, though, that young Ryan was durable and survived the fall. I'm a Ryan, and I'm going to make someone say Ryan a lot, but it won't be me Ryan, but Super Kid Ryan. Cosmic. Every one of the boys has a pretty solid reason to distrust or downright hate the soups. We are introduced to Huey right before A-Train takes the express straight through Huey's girlfriend Robin. Billy Butcher's hate is so strong he starts to cross over into a problem all his own, and that's down to his own motivation. His wife Becca worked at Vought International in their social media department. Homelander's first sin against Becca is bad. Too bad for this video. When she finds out that she's carrying Homelander's son, Vought conspires to safely deliver young Ryan and then fake her demise so she can raise him separate of Homelander or Billy Butcher, until both men find the pair. His constant visits go against the deal she made with Vought, and she's forced to live with that torment while Homelander clumsily tries to insert him into their lives, eventually bringing Stormfront to take Ryan and raise him with the only soup more messed up than him. The resulting abduction attempt finally triggers Ryan's abilities, where he accidentally delivers a fatal injury to his mom. Aside from his power separating him from even the other soups and Vought controlling every aspect they can of his life, Homelander's lack of any true companionship helps push him over the edge. He finally meets someone who can not only handle the level of power that Homelander wields, she's also arguably way more messed up than Homelander, who now doesn't have to hold back around her. Howdy ho, buckaroo. They make the most of their strange romance when they stop a mugger together, then squish his head like a grape, and get romantic in the resulting goo because… gross. Where Superman has all his power, and exercises his strength by using it sparingly, and not using it to enforce his will on others, Homelander has all his powers but thanks to this extremely troubled upbringing and reliance on the ever-manipulative Vought International, he ends up being extraordinarily powerful and feeling powerless at the same time. And he does not deal with it well. After his failed attempt to kidnap Ryan, and his new romantic partner is revealed to have less than a heroic past, Homelander's sense of powerlessness peaks as he begins to question why he has been holding back at all, and who could stop him if he didn't. He starts chanting that affirmation while standing on top of a building in New York, which is fine. It's the other thing he's doing to make himself feel powerful that he's doing that makes it messed up, as it's really more of an alone time activity or with a consenting partner. None of the people below him qualify as a consenting partner. Homelander isn't the only messed up member of the Seven. He just excels at it. Everyone else struggles poorly with their own demons. You have a problem? Of course not. Why would you say that? In the comics, Homelander has a relationship with Queen Maeve, where he emotionally abuses her in creative and horrifying ways. In the show, her primary damage seems to stem from a genuine urge to do good and the slow, grinding realization that what they do is anything but, and she is powerless against it. Maeve and Homelander are also a former couple in the series, which complicates the relationship with Elena that she has now. To say that Homelander lacks the emotional maturity for it would be an understatement. His low-level terror that he puts Maeve in, including worrying that Homelander will hurt Elena, causes her to enlist the Deep to retrieve footage of a passenger jet they failed to save as leverage. Of course we can't forget about Transoceanic 37. Vought staged a hijacking of an airplane as part of a scheme to sell the superpower-inducing Compound V to the military. Unfortunately, it all goes wrong when the last terrorist kills the pilot and Homelander accidentally fries the controls. Turns out the physics don't favor what happens in comics. It's all well and good for the character to be superpowered, but there's no way for a human-sized superhero to affect its flight path without the integrity of the plane giving up. No, man, no, you stay back! 
So he bails, leaving the innocents on board the plane so as not to spread the truth that Homelander made things worse, not better. This wasn't our first introduction to Homelander's disregard for human life on a mission with Maeve. A sniper has mounted himself on the 33rd floor of the building and is raining his terror down below. Maeve and Homelander show up, contrasting the police and armor taking cover, while the two heroes gradually discuss the current state of the Seven, including the missing Translucent. It should be a quick grab, but after Maeve subdued the shooter, Homelander goes that extra mile too far and drives his hand into the shooter's chest. With the banality of evil, he casually picks up the gun to shoot at Maeve so it appears the shooter had shot at them first. The hijacked plane was only part of the plan to accept soups in the military. His other plan is to allow some Compound V to fall off the trunk, so to speak, in key areas of unrest in the hopes of creating a super terrorist. The results bring about Nakib, who survives the process of taking Compound V as an adult. Nakib gains the power to self-explode without getting hurt. Of course, he also creates a more formidable foe in the female of the species, so not everything goes to plan. With the demise of Translucence, the Seven have a slot to fill. Ashley Barrett proposes a soup named Blind Spot to excite a demographic sense, as his name suggests, he's blind. To make up for it, he has heightened senses like hearing. Well, he did, until Homelander, who feigned excitement about the new hero, clapped him on his ears, exploding his eardrums. He then turns and admonishes Barrett for trying to bring what he calls a cripple on the Seven, cause he's genuinely terrible. With the third season just getting underway, Homelander is promising to get even darker and more wild. With as dark as he's been, it's hard to think what that could be. Dropping contest winners in a car while flying from the comics is certainly on the table. Well, not exactly the rollout I imagined for you, but you handled it well. 